This is Ader to Better with Avi Singh and Sajid Khan. What up, Sajid? What's up, Avi? Today, hey, I'm doing good. Welcome back. On today's episode, uh, we are joined for the first time uh, with a guest, uh, Kevin Bilal Chapman. Bilal, introduce yourself to the nice people. Hello, how are you doing? I'm glad to be here. Uh, we're thrilled. We're absolutely thrilled. We're going to talk about Bilal's story. He's been featured on a Netflix documentary called The Return. He's been a guest on... Uh, John Oliver's show, and he has a really incredible story. I can't wait to get into it. In our opening segment, we're going to talk about that. In our deep dive, we're going to talk about the recent uh, decision about parole and O.J. Simpson. We're going to talk about parole in general, aging prison populations, and uh, Bilal's going to stand in with us as a, as a co-host for today. And then, of course, at the end of the episode, we will do our things. Let's do it. Side to kick us off. So we're, as you just mentioned, we're honored to have our first guest ever on the Eight or a Better podcast, uh, Kevin Bilal Chapman. Uh, Bilal, you and I met four or five years ago t- yes. in 2012, is that right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And can you tell the audience how we, how we met, if you recall? Uh, yeah, uh, my attorney at the time, uh, I'm a former incarcerated uh, returning citizen, so um, we first met through my attorney, Jessica Delgado, uh, at the Public Defender's Office, because uh, as we began to uh, go down this journey of trying to be released from prison, uh, she said, I'm both, both you and I are both practicing Muslims, she said, hey, um, there's an opportunity for, um, there's, an op- there's somebody that I want you to meet in my office, his name's Sajid, and, you know, I think there's a wonderful thing that you guys can talk about and things you can learn from each other. So I said, yeah, so you came to see me. Yeah. And uh, I was just like, man, amazed that I was able to speak to somebody that could kind of think the same thoughts that I had and was really um, comforting to me. So that's how we first met. Yeah, so this was in 2012, Prop 36, or 2013 maybe? Yes. Uh, Prop 36 just passed in the state of California, uh, changing the three strikes law, um, mandating that people convicted of non-violent, non-serious third strikes got a chance at being released from their uh, life sentences. And you were assigned to my colleague, Jessica Delgado. That is correct. And she found out that you were a practicing Muslim. She knew that I was a practicing Muslim. And she said, hey, uh, she said to you, I'm going to get Sajid to come see you. And then she got me to come visit you. And at the time, I was on a juvenile court assignment, so I wasn't even handling adult cases. So I... Uh, took me a little while to come see you. I think you were waiting. <laughs> I, was, I was like, What's, this guy ain't coming. <laughs> and uh, I remember we met at Main Jail South, and uh, I hadn't met you because it was a blind date, essentially. Absolutely. I didn't know what you looked like. And we sat there in that room, and we talked, and we talked about faith and yeah. family and what things were going to be like on your release. And uh, Or possible not release. What was I going to do? Did yeah. you know at the time if you were getting released? No, absolutely not. Because your case was... Contested. Contested, okay. Yeah. So I didn't know, and I was like, you know, I wanted to have faith and hope and belief, but at the same time, I couldn't give myself that much. Because what if I had to go back, right. you know? Exactly. And that was a, that was a real possibility of going back. And if I had to go back, I had to keep that that well, facade and that kind of imagery of it. Can I ask you? You were incarcerated for eleven years total. Yes, just about eleven. Were you uh, incarcerated when the first reform measure was on the ballot? So the the state of California was going to vote on whether to change the three strike law in like 2006, I think. Prop 30, Prop 30, Prop 66. And so you, it sounded like you were. I was. Uh, what was I mean? What was that like? So, in like February, in March, and April, we were like 76 percent to 24 percent. It was just killing the polls. We were gonna. It looked it like it was gonna win. Pass. It was gonna kill it, and then it got to about June, July. It was about mm, 65%, 35%. It was still really, really high. And it got around October, and Arnold Schwarzenegger went to work, went on an all-out blitz on it. We're going to let this person out. You're going to let that person out. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Uh, Did people they talk about looking. you? Were you mentioned them? I wasn't... They didn't talk about me personally. <laughs> if they would have talked about me personally, we would all went on. But, you know, they, yeah. they talked about, you know, specific people that I thought were... They thought were going to be dangerous and going to be, um, you know, possibility, you know, of uh, recidivism when they came out, so... They were really scared, and I'll never forget that night. We were still winning, like 52, 48% that night. And um, when I woke up the next morning, we had lost. We had lost 51, 49, somewhere around there. And uh, there was two suicides that day in San Quentin. Wow. So, and several uh, others around the, around the state of California.